Hi, this is Tiffany Secard with Home Key Mortgage, and you're listening to Local Leaders, the podcast. Every business owner has a story. Let Jim Chapman tell yours. Hi, it's Tricia Johnston, residential realtor with Ladder and Bloom with your real estate tip of the week. Daylight savings time is ending, so that means it's time to start preparing for the winter months. Here are a few things that you can do to not only protect you and your home, but also save you money. First, have your heater serviced and cleaned. Second, replace the batteries in your smoke detectors and make sure that your fire extinguishers are charged. Third, have your chimney inspected and ask them to check the damper as well to make sure that cold air and smoke don't come in your house and warm air doesn't escape. Fourth, stock up on firewood but don't store it against or under your house. That's an open invitation for termites. Fifth, check all of your exterior doors and windows and seal up any gaps with weather stripping or caulk. Sixth, wrap any exposed pipes in water spigots. Seventh, get a insulation blanket for your water heater. And lastly, check to make sure there's no damaged or missing insulation in your attic or under your house. I hope this motivates you to start preparing for the winter months because ready or not, colder weather's on its way. I'm Tricia Johnston with Ladder and Bloom and I'll be back here next week with another real estate tip for you. Hi folks, I want to tell you about Denim Springs Fit Body Boot Camp and their 28 day $77 Jumpstart program. There's no strings attached and really no reason not to try. You can be in and out in just 30 minutes and best of all, these 30 minute sessions are scheduled throughout the mornings and evenings to fit your busy schedule. These 30 minute sessions are fun, positive, encouraging, and you can even sign up online. Just visit GetFitDenimSprings.com. Denim Springs Fit Body Boot Camp, a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. Joining us today, we have Travis and Courtney Taylor of Faithful Tattoo Studio. So first of all, welcome to Local Leaders, the podcast. Thank you for having us. We're excited. Yes. Today, we're going to cover a wide array of all the things you folks do at Faithful Faithful Tattoo Studio. But today, we want to learn a little more about y'all personally as well. So Courtney, we'll start with you. Okay. Uh, Tell us a little bit about your family. Okay. Uh, I'm from this area. Uh, I graduated from Live Oak in 2003. The Eagles. Yeah. All right. I did go to Denham, though, until the middle of ninth grade. That's whenever I transferred. So There you go. Um, yeah, I moved to Baton Rouge a couple times, yeah. and I just felt called back to Livingston. I'm, I guess, a little bit of a country girl. Yeah, <laughs> you know? you're an LP girl. <laughs> I am. I am. So I wanted to come back to this area. Uh, we waited, or I waited, we didn't wait, but I waited until I was 30 to get married. Yeah. Um, we got married about six years ago, and then um, instant family, I was blessed to have a stepdaughter. She was six years old at the time, and then we waited a couple years, and we had our second child, yeah. Autumn, so she's wow. four years old now. Four yeah. years old. I know. Yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, they're fun at that age. So. She's blast. She's got so much personality, but the sass is strong enough. <laughs> I can tell you now. <laughs> it gets worse. Trust me. <laughs> I got two 16-year-old twin girls right now. Oh, wow. yeah. That is a handful. They got a little sassiness to them. They're good kids, but boy. Ooh. Yep, yep. They like to test my bald head sometimes. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Now, Travis, outside of tattooing, you have a few hobbies that we want to tell everybody about. One of them is motorcycles. Yeah. So you like motor? What you know? There's Harley people. There's people that are anti Harley people. What are you? I am, I guess, whatever two wheels and an engine. So it doesn't matter. (laughs) (laughs) Love it, love it. Now, do you prefer like crotch rockets or are you? uh, I'm a a cruiser guy. You're a cruiser guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love cruisers too. I I rode a uh, rocket one time, and I'm not a fan of those. Yeah. Yeah, you ever take them like on long trips? I got some friends. They'll go all the way up to Tennessee with them bikes. 
No, I haven't got to do that yet, but I do want to try one yeah. time. Because of his wife. Yeah, yeah because wife kids. It's always because of the wife, yeah. ain't it? It's like a couple of hours, and I'm like, mm, my butt's kind of starting to hurt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, Go to St. Francisville and yeah, back. That's yeah, as far as you Find get. somewhere to eat and, you know, head back. Yeah, so, so do you ride as well? Oh, on the back. Yeah, um, yeah. You're not uh, driving one? Not okay. yet. Not, not yet. yet. And I think if I ever do, it's probably going to be something with three or four wheels. I'm not going to be a full-on motorcycle girl I right think. i'm not that right. cool i'm just <laughs> not <laughs> i love it and you also like to boil crawfish and peanuts oh yeah and mm-hmm. you did not bring me any boiled peanuts today how I dare you no, sir i got uh i probably got like 15 <laughs> bags frozen right now that i need to get wow. rid of so um yeah yeah i'm not from here i'm from california yes so i'm trying to get my Cajun recipes down. Yes. Uh, I love the food out here. It's awesome. Yeah. 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 And what part of California? San Bernardino. San Bernardino. Yeah. Where, where is that? Is that like central California? No, it's southern. It's southern? Okay. Straight desert out there. So, wow. Yeah. Cactuses and all. Cactuses, Joshua trees, <laughs> bush. I mean, you think of a desert, not the Sahara, that's what it is. Interesting. So yeah. this is, was it, when you came down to Louisiana, was it kind of culture shock to you? or? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'd Way imagine so. Like, yeah. California and the South are just night and day. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. T- traffic, especially in those major parts of California, are, are yeah. you know, unbearable, I hear. Uh, I got some friends, and they're, they – Move had to move to California for job related reasons, and uh, and they always tell me they're like, Man, a commute here that's like 20 minutes is like three hours, literally, yeah, like, like three hours there. Driving through LA, you, you better pack something because you're not going to get to where you need to go. <laughs> Bring wow. a snack, yeah. <laughs> wow. So, do you go back or back and forth, or you haven't been back in a long time? I haven't been back in a long time. Uh, I used to go back and forth growing up, yeah. Uh, between my mom and my dad. My dad lives out here. My mom lives in Arizona now, but okay. she lived in California her whole life. So that's awesome. why we were back and forth. Let me ask you all this. Tattooing is a trade, plain and simple. I right. look at it no different than a painter or a cabinet maker. It's something you kind of have to master, right? You, yes. ha- you have good, experienced tattoo artists, and you've got some that just kind of put, a, I guess, a tattoo pen in their hand and, and call themselves a tattoo artist, right? Yeah, you got some scratchers out there, and then you've got the pros. And I'm somewhere in the middle. I've nowhere near near mastered my craft but i'm always always learning because well, if you're not learning you're not mastering anything even the masters are still learning at something you know 100 percent. so and there's trends too with tattoos oh, yeah. like there's things yes. that come and go you know so it's like you you have to get with the times like yes. you have to be adaptable you have to like learn what's cool what's new you know and right it never stays the same yeah and it's interesting you bring that up we do discuss trends a little bit and mm-hmm. the, we're going to cover um, and I did want to say, I've been on your Facebook page and folks out there listening, watching, check it out. This dude's got some artwork with him. I mean, he, he, uh, he's being modest. Uh, I'm going to tell you what, he's, he's got some amazing work on his page. So we'll tell you later on how to, uh, how to go to that Facebook and give it a like, and I'll even link it to, uh, to this video so that people can check that out, make it easy on them. Uh, now take us back to the start of your tattooing for you. How did you know it was something you would enjoy and eventually kind of make a business out of it? All right. So the little pause I had there earlier was I didn't know if I wanted to go too far back in my history because growing up was never fun for me. Right. You know, we all have rough pasts, but mine, um, I don't know. My mom and dad were there, but they weren't there. Mm-hmm. So we kind of had to raise ourselves. I've got five other siblings. Oh, wow. So when I got a little bit older, probably eight or nine years old, I always drew. Like, yeah. I love drawing. That yeah. was my escape yes. from everything. So, and then, but at the right, right there about the same time, I started using drugs and alcohol and stuff like that. So yeah. from eight to what, 25, I'd always done drugs and everything. So, Uh but art was always a way to get out. So I always drew. Yeah. And then I got my first tattoo when I was 12. My cousin did it on me. Yeah. And then 
my dad being my dad, <laughs> you know, he he put the whooping on me, and yeah. I was I was a rebel, you know, outlaw. Like you're not gonna tell me what to do. Yeah. So I picked up a tattoo machine and started tattooing. There you and go. I wasn't good, but yeah. I did it. You know, I was a scratcher, a legit scratcher, but. I didn't have anybody to teach me how to do any of this stuff. So I had to learn a lot of it on my own. Yeah. Watching YouTube videos, doing whatever I could to basically get better at it because I fell in love with it. You know, sure. it was a way to express and keep my artwork out there. So, um, yeah, ever since then, I've just been practicing and doing it, and I did it for money and it was a good way to make money. Yeah. So I kind of picked it up from there, but the love never f faded. It yeah. always stayed with me. So when I met her, I, she was just like, hey, let's make this a thing. Yeah. So It didn't happen quite that smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> it never does. It never does. <laughs> hey, ladies, it's Pate with Ido Lane Spa and Boutique, located in Walker. We offer all things skincare, hair care, makeup, spray tan, lashes, and more. And we have a full selection of clothes. And we also do private events from birthday parties, bridal showers, and more. So stop by today and get your queen on, making every woman a queen. See you soon. So we, we got married and we got together and he's like, yeah, I'm a tattoo artist. And to be perfectly honest, I saw some of his tattoos on him and I was like, yeah, baby, that's right. You're, you're a tattoo yeah, artist. Right. <laughs> and, and then so he did. He started tattooing on friends and family. And I was quick to realize, I was like, wow, you are really talented. Like yeah. this, this is something that you have a passion for, obviously, and you're yeah. obviously natural at it. So let's cultivate it. Let's see where this can go. And it has just grown. Yeah. And that's where we kind of are today, where it's like gotten so big, where we actually had to legitimize we had to you know facilitate all the growth yeah so amazing mm -hmm. and i want to go back a little bit to uh what you were just saying because it's it's very important and something i would love people and i'm sure you as well to get out of this podcast is that uh you can have a sh sort of a checker past maybe mm -hmm. to say the least and uh overcome that right right absolutely um and it's usually a woman that saves you <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> quite yes. honestly i mean that for us God. men <laughs> no yeah. doubt about it i did uh nine months in teen challenge mm -hmm. rehab mm -hmm. um i was homeless before that i'd been homeless for a couple of years just got out of jail um, wow yeah it was bad well i was sleeping in this guy's truck because he was homeless, too, and he had a truck. And I was like, shoot, yeah. a roof over my head. You Absolutely. Know? And then uh, I just started looking at myself. You know, I was yeah. sitting there awake. It was probably 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'm just like, what am I doing? Yeah. Well, I got up and got out and left. I went to my dad's house, and he said, oh, you're ready to stop? And I said, yeah. And he goes, well, you're going to you're gonna have to go to a rehab. That, that switch flipped. And I was like, no, I'm, I don't need that. And he was like, well, yeah, you do. So I went. And when I got out, two weeks later, I met her. Three months later, we were married. And six years after that, I owned a business. So it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of dedication. But it can happen. Anybody can do it. You know, yeah. like you said, it's a, it's a skill. Yeah. You, know, you develop skills over time. Yeah. So, yeah, anybody can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. It's um, And it's a mindset. You just have to make up your mind that that's something that you want. You yeah. want to be sober. You know, you want to make a better life for yourself. And that's what you did. You reached out and you achieved it. Like I said, it's hard work, but it's worth it in the end. You know, anybody who's willing to put up with hard work definitely deserves the route they're going. Yeah. So. And I think a support system behind that, mm -hmm. someone behind you to, you know, not only push you, but uh, someone behind you that uh, kind of redirects. Yeah. You. Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, without that, uh, it's just kind of you. Right. Yep. But when you have someone that is relying on you, counting on you, you love, they love 
Uh, yeah, it makes all the difference in the world. Man, shout out to you, brother. Thank you. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. And he said that's one of the hardest things. It wasn't quitting the drugs that was so hard. It was learning how to adult. Yep. It was learning how to live a life sober and without, you know, couch surfing, without, you know, basically being a bum and yeah. having to learn how to adult at 25, 26 years old. So. Yeah. And I think a lot of people in that situation, it's uh, they just need some confidence with I can make a I haven't ruined my life Mm -hmm. I can still make an amazing life oh look I've got a talent I've got something that I can build on once you build that confidence in yourself it's a lot easier to kind of mature Mm -hmm. and uh it because you always have something to look forward to this is my opinion yeah you know you um was this something you were at first apprehensive of and Yes. (laughs) Um, My parents owned a small business uh, growing up. And so I watched how hard owning a small business was. So you eat, breathe, you know, sleep the business. And so that was one of the things that I was hesitant about. Not only that, but also we're very family oriented. And so, you know, with owning a tattoo shop, the hours aren't always great. You're working nights, you're working weekends, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it did. It took some time. Um, and not necessarily convincing, but just really meditating on it and seeing if this is the direction that we wanted our life to go. Um, but and the we, deeper we sat on that for a long, long time, like, yeah. yeah, so we decided to legitimize and it just took off from there again. So, because now we're able to advertise and you yes. know, put the word out and, and we're come like, on podcasts, and come and on podcasts. All sorts, sorts yeah, of it was all word of mouth. It was, but that's where it grew is it was just like you know, our cousin, sister, nephew, like everybody was telling everybody, and that's where it was just kind of like, wow, like we were growing. You discussed that you were kind of self taught in a lot of ways, but yeah. you did do a little apprenticeship for right. a while. And, and uh, yeah. tell me about that. So, I lived in Crescent City, California with my mom. We moved to Seattle, and then after Seattle, we moved down to Crescent City, which is the northernmost part of California, Mm -hmm. right there in the tip. Yes. Before you get to uh, Oregon. Yes. It was a little bitty town, little small town, and um, there was a tattoo shop there. Well, my mom worked with the husband's wife as a caregiver in a, a retirement home. Well, her husband owned the tattoo shop, and they kind of hooked it up. So I did a two-year stint there. Wow. Uh, It was called Underground Inc. in Crescent City, California. Good name. I like it. (laughs) Well, he was kind of like me and grew up kind of self-taught. So, yeah, yeah, I got a lot of shop exposure there, and it it was a lot of fun. Excellent. The time we were there, so. Very good. Yeah. So you were really focusing, focusing down, and and uh, you know, tattoo artists are no different than any anybody else in that uh, they had. You know, it's kind of like a school almost when you when you're under the tutelage of someone right. else. I guess you could say, and they're showing you things that maybe you would learn no other way. Yeah, and, and I went through a traditional apprenticeship, and it yes. was um, it was hard because traditional apprenticeships they make you want it they mm-hmm. they put you through the ringer to make sure that's what you want to do because you're putting something on somebody permanently yes you know that's what these scratchers don't understand they're just like oh we're gonna i'm gonna practice on people you know yeah. i did it too i'm not faulting anybody but sure you, you really shouldn't do that practice on people they've made a way where you're not tattooing on um you're not tattooing on fruit anymore yeah. You can get the practice skins and practice without hurting people because that's what you're doing. You're hurting people yes. when you put those kind of tattoos on people. So, Especially and, with sanitation yeah, and everything, sanitation, too. You have yeah. to learn. There's a lot. Yeah. But, you know, I, I've been there. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, I, I did it right the first time because I didn't. I went through a good 10 years of hurting people before I actually got my apprenticeship. Yes. So when I got my apprenticeship, it was like, oh, man. Yeah. You know, like, I've been doing this wrong. And I had yeah. to forget everything I knew about tattooing and relearn a lot of stuff. So. Which is hard to do because oh, you get man. in habits just yeah. like anything else. And it's like, I got to retrain myself. Yep. It's kind of like a golfer that learns the wrong golf swing. And, I mean, try fixing that. Trust me. It, it's not I easy. Know, I, I play golf. So <laughs> yeah. It's, really it's not easy. <laughs> Uh, so very good. I want to quote your why statement and your questionnaire. I asked you why, you know, kind of why you do this. Mm -hmm. You said tattooing is your passion. And as a bonus,
kindness that brings people joy into their lives. It really does. Yeah. And I would imagine there's a lot of people, these tattoos are personal to them. I mean, let's face it, you know, they're going to be on there a while. And uh, what? give me an example of some of the more personal tattoos you've done. BJ Pawn and Gun in Denham Springs wants to buy your unwanted gold jewelry, gold coins, and gold bullion. With 30 years of experience operating in the Livingston Parish area, BJ Pawn wants to be your source when selling your gold. So stop by BJ Pawn today for a no obligation offer. BJ Pawn, a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. done a lot of memorial tattoos and man, there's just so many i yeah. did one tattoo on this lady and she had wanted this tattoo for years and years and years mm-hmm. and when she finally got it and she saw how it looked on her body she just started bawling wow like crying that's was, how much it meant to her that's how much it meant to her and i had no idea because it it wasn't a memorial piece or anything but it really meant that much to her yeah so that's that's the one that really stuck with me the most and there's a lot of them that get memorial tattoos and uh just stuff that just reminds them of a better time you know yeah so, yeah well and the fact that you know what you did brought up um, that kind of emotion in that person, you know, has got to right. be a good feeling for you. That it, in it that is respect. a good feeling, and when you can put something on somebody permanently, mm-hmm. because it costs a lot of money to have it removed and it hurts. Yeah, and they love it. Yeah, you know, you've done something right. Yeah, so it. Yeah, it is a really good feeling knowing that you can bring that much joy to somebody. You know, besides your kids or your family, it's a complete stranger. Yeah. So it is it is really rewarding. Yeah, and I can see your passion for it. Yeah. And uh and you know, I'm a firm believer in there are some people in life and they're you know, you go through struggles, right? We all do. Mm-hmm. Um and then you know, but there's some people in life they end up right where they should be. Right. And for me, in, in the little bit I've talked to you already, I feel like you're right where you should be in life you. It, you know certain people i believe that people are put on this earth and, and are given gifts uh by god for certain things and and this is your gift man and that's that's awesome you're living your dream right thank you uh miss courtney i'm gonna turn to you for a second now let's talk about the name faithful tattoo studio maybe not the first thing that people think of when they think of tattoo studios is faith, right? But you are both very strong in your faith. And kind of tell me how you came up with the name. Honestly, Travis came up with the name. Okay. You know, like we, we've been involved in church for a while, you know, and everything like that. And we knew that that was, if we were to ever open up a tattoo, we wanted that to be a big part of our culture, you know. Yeah. Um. But I think what we love about it is we create that comfortable environment. Maybe people that aren't necessarily prone to getting tattoos feel comfortable coming to our shop because it is more of a laid back atmosphere. Um, I just think that, you know, everything that we've worked for and everything that's, you know, coming together, it just you can feel it whenever you walk through our doors like we I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. It's So back when I was in my kitchen, we lived in a trailer on the same road we live in now. So yeah. I was tattooing in my kitchen, and we would have people say that they loved the atmosphere of my kitchen. Yeah. Because she'd be cooking. It was always at mm-hmm. night. She'd yeah. be cooking, so we'd feed people. and. Just, oh, that's awesome. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Gumbo, chili, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. You want a ball? <laughs> we made them feel welcome. You know, you don't get that from a lot of tattoo shops. Yeah. So we made them feel welcome. Even though it was in my kitchen, they would prefer to come to me than go to some extreme tattoo shop. Yeah. And I'm not saying they're all like that. I'm just saying that. When you think of a tattoo shop, you think of, like, bikers and stuff like that right. walking in. There's art all over the walls. And that's not a bad thing because if that's what you're into, hey, that's what you're into. Yeah. But um, the people that we normally get, 
come into my house and I said, I've always said that I want to bring that feeling back to my shop. Yes. I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, I want something faith-based. Yes. So it just came to me one day. Faith it's a great Tattoo name. Studios. Yeah. So, um, and it has more than one meaning. It's not just faithful as in Christianity, but faithful as in we're going to take care of you. You know, yes. I want you just have faith in us. Right. Yes. You know, right. have faith in God and also have faith that I'm not going to screw your body up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> well, and I'll tell you your, uh, your logo is, is amazing. Um, Thank you. you know, you've got the praying hands, uh, you've got the tattoo and that neat <laughs> little font. Uh, it'd be hard to criti- criticize it. it. It's just, it seems perfect to me uh, with your message, who you are, and what you're aiming to accomplish well, as, as well. And he designed it. That was his yeah. own design, too. So It's not perfect, but, you know, when, when you think of us, we don't want you to think, oh, that's just another tattoo studio, yeah. or that's just another tattoo shop. We don't want to be just another tattoo shop we want to go above and beyond like we want to get out in the community and start helping the community yes um like we want to do stuff like that not just because it's the thing to do but you know everybody needs help so yes. i want to start doing that now that i'll have more time i'll be able to start doing that that's a beautiful thing so yeah. you know giving back is is important right and and uh something that it took me many years in life to realize how um you know, true leaders really give back. Um, that's that's kind of the difference. It's not always about being number one. You want to be number one yeah. in everything you do. Um, but giving back is kind of what separates leaders from from not leaders, I guess you could say, in my opinion. Right. So, uh, so that's good. You've learned that a lot earlier in life yeah. than I did, for <laughs> sure. I mean, in today's society, with the way the world is going, <clears throat> excuse me, but there's no sense of community anymore. Yeah. You know, there's no sense of pride in your community. There's yeah. no sense of helping each other out anymore. It's every man for himself. Yes. Like, who's going to be the one to start stopping that? That's right. You know, like, we all somewhere. need to yeah. band together and realize that, hey, we're all in this together. Yeah. We all got one life to live. Yeah. And after that is eternity. What do you want to do with your eternity? Right. You know, like, how are you going <clears> to, <throat> how are you going to be sitting on judgment day? 100 percent. so you know that that's what i believe that we need to come back to a community sense yes and it's really hard to bring it back but we can bring it back if everybody helps and joins in together so yeah 100 percent. i believe that as well uh so travis what's the longest you've ever done in one sitting on a tattoo <laughs> 18 hours straight <sighs> That's amazing. And they call that what, a tap out? Tap out. I do do not do tap outs. I don't do tap outs. I'm sorry. 18 Don't, don't call me for a tap out, please. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to be real. He was a little upset that day. I wasn't in the picture yet. And, <laughs> and for those that may not be familiar with what that is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but basically it's a flat fee, and you can get whatever you want, and – until you can't take it no more, and then yeah, and apparently you had someone that was uh, like a cyborg or Just something. Superman, dude, yeah. <laughs> that would not stop. <laughs> and uh, he he paid one hundred and fifty dollars for wow eighteen hours worth of work. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah no, not doing that. I don't blame longer. you. I don't blame you. But uh, pretty awesome that you you know you la- you lasted that long, <laughs> standing straight up and. And uh, tattooing, so great job there. Now, although you're not new to the tattoo industry, you both are new to owning your own business yeah. and having just opened in August of this year. Yes. So you're you're relatively new to this whole business process, even though it was kind of a side hustle for a while. Uh, Courtney, how smooth was the process as far as opening the tattoo studio? And then Travis, how valuable has this lady been to your business from the aspect of business? No, oh, well, if I lost her, the business would not be running yeah. smoothly at all. So, <laughs> It'd be no. totally illegal. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be back in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Fit blends of 
Denim Springs can help you with everything from meal prep to supplements. I love it that they serve breakfast all day in addition to the best ultra healthy wraps you can really get anywhere in Livingston Parish. They are home of the $5 Smoothie Friday and are an amazing sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. Fit Blends Denim Springs, fast fit food for you. <laughs> she is the brains, the backing. She is everything to this business. I am just the art. Right. So she does everything behind the scenes. So miss behind the scenes. How hard was it? You know, when I think about it, I think a lot of red tape. Yeah. And that was like, um, for those of you that don't know, we actually converted our mother-in-law suite into our tattoo studio. It's fully licensed. Great everything. idea. Yeah. yeah, and especially not a lot of overhead, you know, just starting sure. out. Um, but, yeah, we had to get in front of the parish council and get approval to, you know, have a tattoo shop on residential property. You know, we had to go through sanitation, fire marshal. There is a lot of ins and outs, you know. Um, yeah. It was, to be completely honest, it was easier than what I thought it would be. But it was still a lot of legwork. And so, yeah. and there's still a lot of learning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're still learning about taxes sure. and, you know, um, accounting and, you know, all that. But um, I think it's just, you know, a learning curve for anybody that's opening up a new business. And so that's what he, he's the dreamer. Like we, we complement each other very well because I say that he's the gas and I'm the brakes. Oh, I like that. <laughs> but it's like, he's like, go, go, go. Like, he wants to open up a huge tattoo shop and yeah. have all these tattoo artists under us. And I'm like, can I just learn QuickBooks first? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were opening up location number two. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, hold up. Like, let's, let's you know, work with what we have right now. But right. It, it works out well because he pushes me out of my comfort zone and he's reaching for the stars. And it's just, it works well for us because, like I said, we're just... We're growing, and then in the same breath, you know, we're learning. And yes. so it's just very good. Going great. Very good. Very good. Now, uh, you mentioned that it's a, a converted mother in law suite that you have there. And you had mentioned earlier that people really enjoy, even when you were doing it in the kitchen, the atmosphere that right. you had. I think that's one of the biggest things that separates you now in that mother in law suite is that you have a different atmosphere. It's a more. I would imagine a more comfortable atmosphere uh, than you may run into at, at another tattoo shop. Yeah. Um, all of that being said, the importance of that is something that you really can't you really can't miss because I would imagine some people go in there and they're nervous. I mean, yeah. I don't. I, everybody that goes in there, I would imagine uh, some of them have never had a tattoo, or maybe they've had one and it was twenty years ago and they were drunk and they don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it was, um, how important is that atmosphere? Do you think? Um, I would say, I don't want to say it's everything, but it really is because if you don't have a good atmosphere and you don't have a good attitude about it. Yeah, they'll come to you, but they don't want to come back. Right. Yeah. And we have a lot of returning customers, right. people that. That's a good that sign. Keep, yeah, they keep yeah. coming back. They turn 18, and, you know, yeah. each month they're getting a new tattoo. <laughs> like, wait, you got to save some skin, you know? Yeah. So, like, I have clients that are like, hey, I got my 15 year old daughter that, and, wow. you know, they feel comfortable enough to say that. Yeah. So I'm like, no, I don't tattoo on minors. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like when she turns 18, yeah, come on, but. Yeah. But they're comfortable with us. All of our clients inevitably end up becoming our friends. It's true. And it's awesome. Like, yeah, we that have is so many really friends awesome. that we have made. And that's like, honestly, I almost feel like they're friends, but they're also fans. Yeah. yeah. And that's like what's been really cool is just the outpouring of people like um, on social media. Like, yes, they they just support us and it just warms our heart because it makes us feel like we're doing something right. You are doing something right. And I'll tell you, I looked on, you know, obviously I've been all over your Facebook and um, I do see that. I see people interacting with your post. I see people sharing your post. Mm -hmm. All of those things, so important for for new businesses, especially, is exposure. Whether it's through a podcast, whether it's through people who have had experiences with you. That's why Google reviews and Facebook reviews are so important. There's so much weight placed on that yeah. stuff. Correct. 
So, um, so you know, when this thing drops and all y'all are listening, my my following, y'all's following, let's everybody share this thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. and uh, and let people know uh, about how great y'all are at what you do. You know, the business. <laughs> I it, it's funny that you called him the gas and you the brakes. That is every episode I hear something that is like a really neat uh, ism of mm-hmm. some sort. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Gas awesome. and break. I'm using that one. <laughs> love it. Uh, so, Travis, in, in regard to tattoos, and you brought this up earlier, they can they can be kind of faddish sometimes, right. maybe for lack of a better term, like clothes. Mm-hmm. Um, what is a good example of a tattoo you would consider kind of like, I don't want to use the term played out, but uh, faddish that maybe you're not a huge fan of doing? Um, or you just, you love them all. I enjoy doing tattoos. Uh, there are some that I don't particularly enjoy to do. Yeah. Like he's trying tribal. to be careful. You yeah. can notice yeah. he's trying yeah. not to step on any <laughs> well, and, and, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, but when I think of it from a guy that doesn't do, t- I think of like Pamela Anderson when she got the barbed wire, mm-hmm. right? Right. Um, awesome tattoo. But so many people did it after that. I, to me, it kind of lost its luster a little mm-hmm. bit. Right. Um, His is tribal. Yeah. Tribal, yeah. Like Traditional straight, tribal. He's not tri- a big. Black tribal. I'm yeah. not a big fan of that. Uh, sunflowers. Sunflowers. I love the way they look, but I'm not a big fan of, of doing sunflowers. Yeah. Uh, I have a particular style of sunflower that I do when I do tattoo uh, sunflower. And everybody a sunflower really everybody i would have never sunflower. guessed that <laughs> no wife, kidding my yeah. wife got a sunflower. <laughs> <laughs> i'm so offended right now yeah. like, <laughs> that's awesome i'm sorry i will do sunflowers and i do enjoy doing them but with a smile on his face yeah, he'll do a sunflower. there's so many of them that i just got burnt out on them. yeah so, um yeah interesting now do you have a favorite maybe tattoo something that when people come in and they want that you're like oh i'm really good at doing these uh american traditional i love the simplicity of american traditional there's only three colors you use big bold lines so you know it's going to be there 50 years from now yes um i love american traditional that's tattoos what it's i just, want that's my favorite i think i want style. american traditional yeah. that would fit my personality that for right. sure and it's yeah. timeless and it it's is. Timeless. It's very timeless. Yep. So that's it. That's what I'm getting. <laughs> Done deal. <laughs> Send me some options. All right. <laughs> All right. So Travis, I'm going to hit you with a few questions, like we talked about earlier, that people reached out to us and wanted us to ask you. So, uh, so here's the first one: Are tattoos extremely painful? I guess it depends on what part of the body you get it on yeah um so the area of the body right. makes a difference what's the most probably the area of the body that's thought that hurts the worst maybe would be a good term the head yeah the head I that's guess. where i want mine <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. just kidding uh the head the lower abdomen ribs yeah. ribs Ribs, really? The ribs. That's interesting. I think the only tattoo that I've ever seen somebody tap on out on, on in our shop was a rib tattoo. Yep. A sweet little girl. And, you know, he started the tattoo, and he was not able to finish it. It ended up looking like a little tiny candy cane. Oh, there and you go. she tapped out. I tried out. to talk her out yeah. of it. I did. Yeah. I tried to talk tried her out cream. of it. Everything. I tried doing everything, and mm-hmm. she was adamant about it. I should have shut it down yeah. like I had originally planned, but she yeah. was adamant about it that she could take the pain and funny thing is is she ended up she was not upset at all i was more upset that she didn't get the tattoo and she permanently has a little baby candy cane on her ribs she got the tattoo somewhere else and since then she's come and gotten another tattoo oh, yeah. there you so go. it's been, like yeah. she's you know she was a trooper and about I told it her that if she ever if she ever got it to where she can handle the pain i would cover that up for free so yeah. oh cool yeah. now what would you say is the area of the body where it's you know less painful than maybe any other part of the body if someone says where can i get it where it's going to hurt the least the least i would say probably back of the arm right yeah so yeah top of the arm too that one those are those are pretty tolerable pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so 
To answer your first question, though, it really depends on the person and the location. It really yeah. does. And, and I would imagine the tattoo yeah. as well. Yeah, that's yeah. not a fair question, which one yeah. hurts. I guess if I had to pinpoint, the worst pain would be the head and the ribs. The least would probably be the arm. Everything else is in between, so yeah. it's not really... Um, but what really hurts for one person doesn't hurt at all right. for the other. Exactly. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I, it definitely I have seen is open for interpretation. For huge thigh pieces, don't even flinch. I got a leg tie, too. Mm-mm. No, ma'am. Yeah, yep. you were jumping. I could, I, I could not. <laughs> like, I don't, I'm going to, full disclosure, I don't drink whiskey. And I yeah. had to drink whiskey to get through that. There tattoo. you go. Yep. Like, it was that bad. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, let me ask you um on that on that note, what is the most what would you say is the most popular spot to get it? And I know there's a wide array, but what do you get a lot of requests for as far as locations of tattoos? Stephanie Berthelot and the crew at SR Enterprise can handle it all from sheetrock to texture, to paint. Give Stephanie a call at 504-432-9284. SR Enterprise, where they spread the paint and you spread the word. With men, normally it's uh, right here on the forearm. Yeah. Uh, That's a very popular spot. Uh, With women... It's either the wrist or the, yeah, back, the shoulder. back shoulder. So yeah, um, I can see that yeah. um, a back shoulder with women. Right. There's a lot with with those, and and I know like the lower, you know, almost like the instep of the foot or whatever. Right, a yeah. lot of people get them there. I've tattooed the heel before. The heel. Yeah, you wow. can see it on my Instagram. It's interesting. Uh, it's a little dog, and it says Chungus under it. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> that's that's cute. Pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's the same girl that. Got the rib piece. Okay. Yeah. And I tattooed her heel, and she sat through it perfectly. Yeah. And I would imagine that one is pretty bad because yeah. I've tattooed my um, the top of my ankle, Yeah, and it hurt really bad. Yeah. Wow. So and it, it just depends on the person. I guess it really it does. does. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. Are tattoos permanent? No. No. No, you can you, remove them. You if, can have them removed. Yeah. So, so because I think a, a lot of people's apprehension is, well, if, you know, I'm, I say 22 now and one day I'll be 52. And what if I don't like this tattoo anymore? Well, it's not permanent. You can, there are ways to remove it. Exactly. Although, although nobody ever wants their tattoo removed. I right. mean, things happen in life and yep. people, so, so don't let it stop you is, is I guess my point on that. It may yeah. kind of suck to get it removed, right. but you can get it removed. It's, yeah, yeah, and I'm finding out that it's it's not cheap, but it's not expensive either to yeah. have the r- removal done. Yeah. And later on in our career, uh, we're gonna try to get tattoo removal surgery Lasers. done in the shop. Yeah. So yeah. laser removal surgery in the shop. I don't know how to go about doing that right now, and uh, but we're gonna think about that later. That's yeah. a, another project we're gonna be working on. Excellent. And there's also certain parts of the body where it will wear off. Like people sometimes want to get finger tattoos. Finger mm-hmm. tattoos, they do fade over time. Yeah. And then that's like we do give a little disclaimer. If you do get a finger tattoo, we don't do touch ups on them because they, they will yeah, fade. People right. wash their hands and it's stuff constant. more than any yeah. other. Yeah. And then the side of the, of the foot too. The side of the foot, a lot of times it will rub and um, those will go away. But I mean, hey, if you want to check great information. More that's power to you. Yeah. Uh, can you touch up or change other people's tattoos? <laughs> That's kind of a taboo in the in uh, the art industry. But, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't have a problem doing that. And it depends okay. on the circumstance. It really does. Yeah. yeah. Um, if if somebody's just artist shopping, yeah. and someone did a good tattoo, and it's been ten years since they had it touched up, and that mm. guy's still there, like you should go see that guy mm. to touch up his work. Yeah. Um, but say they're from California. They moved right. down here, and, and, I mean, they're not going back to California to get yeah. it done. Right. You're okay with yeah, helping out in that right. situation. So, um, how am, you know, it's obvious. We talked about this a little bit earlier, but it's obvious y'all put a lot of stock into the atmosphere of where you're at. And uh, how important is customer service in your 
business and how much emphasis do y'all place on customer service? It's number one. Yeah. That's, that's number one in my shop is customer service. Um, I'm tired of going to McDonald's, them getting my order wrong, yeah, and them getting mad at me for trying to get get it back. And I know I'm yeah. not the only one. Yeah, so. I said no pickles. <laughs> right, <exactly. laughs> And they're like, I guess we'll change it. Yes. <laughs> you messed my order up. Man. Yeah, so, that's anyways, right. Anyways, um, customer service is very, very, very important. It's imp- it's more important over the artwork. It's o- it's more important than everything because without good customer service, nobody's going to like you. Nobody's going to want to keep coming back. And once they find you and they're all like, oh, you have poor customer service, like, yeah, they're going to use you that one time, but they're yeah. not coming back. Right. So One of my um, friends, she actually, um, she's an entrepreneur too, and she said that she had a conversation with her sister, which made a lot of sense, and she said that her sister will drive 40 minutes out of the way to get her nails done, passing up several nail places on the way. Just because where she goes to get her nails done, they know her name. Yes. And that's the thing. If you make somebody feel special, if you make them feel like you appreciate them, it's not easy to earn money. You know, that's people's hard earned money. And the fact that they want to come and spend it on a tattoo with us, that's flattering. That's, you know, very, we, we appreciate it so much. We want the least we could do is give you a good experience. And so that's what we try to do is just make sure that you know that we value you and your time and, Come and see us. Yeah, and I think it's a big separator Mm -hmm. uh, between y'all and what and other people is the fact that you put so much emphasis on that customer service. And I'm not saying that there's not other places that do as well, but uh, I'm definitely a big separator with you guys that I noticed right off the bat. Um, So (laughs) very important. Now, as we mentioned earlier, you opened in August of this year, and Travis, you've really been kind of limited as to the time you could dedicate right. to your art, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, but you got a big announcement. William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance in Denham Springs can service all of your insurance needs. Offering auto, life, health, and commercial insurance, William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance is a proud supporter of Local Leaders, the podcast. Yeah, so um, I am going to do this full time. Making that leap. Yeah. Well, actually, the podcast that we watched last night. Yeah. uh, You mentioned the Steve Harvey jump. Yes. And we watched it. Yes. That's an amazing man. It's time to jump. Yeah. Yeah, So (laughs) I already put my two weeks in at my job and then watching that last night. So, yep, I think I'm ready to do this full time, man. I love it. I love it so much. That's where I feel myself is in my shop. So, you know, I'm not going to work a dead end job where I can't even grow in the ladder. So, my well, you boy. know what? Some we were talking about this off camera, but some people are just are, are just kind of meant to be certain places, and right. and I just I feel a, a strong uh, deal with you where this is kind of where you should be, right? And um, you know, it's a tough thing. I've been there. I've been there. I would, you know, I had a, I was, I had this as a side hustle for a long time before I said, I'm going to go ahead and do this full time. It's scary. It's nerve wracking, you know, because you, you have responsibility, uh, for other things, but if you don't do it, uh, yeah. you know, and you made yeah. to, yeah, you always have that yeah. there. And let me tell you, um, if it makes you feel any better here when I did it, um, I have never been busier in my life and, and uh, I have we the support of so many, Facebook. including yeah. you guys. And, oh, yeah. and oh, uh, I know you're going to be the same way and shout out to you, man. I know Thank that you. takes a lot of nerve personally and shout out to you for supporting that. Very important. I'm sure that was a discussion, right, oh, between yeah. both of you. Many discussions. And, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And the Love timeline that. kept changing. It was like, yeah, I'm going to do it in five years. Yeah, two years. One year, and then now it's pretty much after Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> I have to work on Monday. Yeah, so. just keep short. Monday, yeah, Monday is like he hates going to work on Mondays now, and it's like 
And don't get me wrong, I like my job I have sure. now. Welding is uh, that's great trade. It's yeah. a great trade. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know, people just dive headfirst into welding. Yes. Not me so much. Like, yeah. I did it as a job. It is a job. I took pride in my job. Yes. But tattooing is not a job for me. Right. And I love doing it. And love yes, it, it's going to be a lot of headache and rigmarole, but in the end, it's worth it. That's worth the headache. Love it. Love it. Now, Courtney, how important has social media played on kind of the growth of your business? It's been huge because yeah. initially we were, like I said, mostly word of mouth. And that's one of the things that I personally try to take the time to do is to be have a very big social media presence and interact with people. Um, I think people like it. Yeah. You know, I think that I they, think they do too. And <laughs> what you do is very visual. Yeah. And the best way to show off visual things is to put them on social mm -hmm. media where people can actually click on that picture and see some of the beautiful right. work you do. Yeah. One of the interesting things about this podcast and something you'll notice when it airs is that we're going to have your artwork pop up nice. during the episode, kind of like when you're watching the news where we'll be talking about tattoos and, and one of your tattoos is going to pop up, you know, and, <laughs> and uh, it'll be pretty neat. But that way people can see that visual even before they go to your Facebook and check it out. Love it. All That's right. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So that will be really nice. Now, uh, I also want to mention, because it's kind of close to holiday time, and, you know, it's getting to look a lot like Christmas and all that stuff. I won't sing it for you, but you, <laughs> know, you get the gist. <laughs> um, Y'all offer gift certificates. We do. Yeah. yeah. That we was do. something people ask us pretty frequently. They're like, well, do you do gift cards? Like, do I prepay? And so we had so many people asking for it. So we went ahead and just got gift certificates. We're like, why not? You can have a cool little envelope with a cool little certificate with our address and where to find us. And then it just kind of put something in people's hands instead Absolutely. of being like hey i bought you a tattoo you know you, they can actually open it and then they yes. have that fun little uh, surprise and i think it's a wonderful idea i mean i think everybody in business should have a gift certificate oh, yeah. at some point because it may be something that that person feels like they can't afford but but maybe their best friend gives them you know and right. says hey go get your tattoo dead. not to mention i mean like we said uh you know you can get rid of a tattoo if you don't want it but mm -hmm. it lasts a lifetime like you're yeah. literally giving somebody a gift that will last a lifetime That's right. so especially if it's sentimental i think that is a really cool gift to give somebody it's the gift that keeps on giving oh, all yeah. year round. Yes, <laughs> yeah. as they say on christmas vacation that's my first quote of christmas yeah, vacation this go. year <laughs> <laughs> there'll be many more to come uh so we talked about the gift certificates and all that stuff. And I thought I do this on every show, but I thought it'd be fun to do some fun facts on, on you folks outside of just tattoos. You know, y'all are some pretty funny people. <laughs> um, and some of these answers may surprise you. Uh, Dane Arnold with iTrade Exchange has been enabling small business in the Livingston Parish area to save cash through his network of over 300 participating Livingston Parish businesses. Saving cash by trading services with other exchange members is what iTrade Exchange is all about. For more information, contact Dane Arnold at 225-205-3640 or visit itradeexchange.biz. Uh, I asked what, my first question was, what job did you want when you were 12 years old? And uh, Courtney said an astronomer. Mm -hmm. So you like the stars and the moon? I did. I don't know. I always had a fascination. And then my mom actually, I don't remember how, exactly how old I was, maybe 11 or 12 years old. She actually bought me a star. You know how they have the yes. star registry? Yeah. I thought that was really cool. Uh, oh, that and is I, cool. Yeah, I had it on my wall and it gave you coordinates of, you know, where there your star you was. And there was a Courtney Pierce star out there in the universe. Universe. I can't so. believe I don't have a star. I, know. Yeah. <laughs> I need to look that up. I should you Google do. that. Travis, you said an engineer. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, architect, engineer. Yeah. Um, man, when I was younger, I had this, I had notebooks that I would draw and design houses in. Yeah. Like big, oh, that's huge cool. houses. Yeah. And um, oh, that's awesome. engineer because I had this design for a, a wingsuit. And it's not too late. No. I can get in with you on a wingsuit. That sounds interesting. We'll, well partner up on that one. <laughs> some guy in uh, Russia or Germany, I think it was Germany, 
did the exact same thing. Did he really? I swear to God. It's a yeah. idea. I, <laughs> they, I mean, it, someone always does it. And always. then you're like, ah, I could have been a millionaire. It's that guy <laughs> that jumps out of the plane with the winged back. Yeah. On oh, him. I seen it. Yeah. So he took yeah. my idea. <laughs> Doggone it. And and we can't get no royalties off of them. That's the bad <laughs> thing. <laughs> All right. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Courtney said super fast cleaning ability. Oh, my gosh. Yes. 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 That would be a great superpower. Absolutely. Awesome. And Travis said the flash. So you also want to oh, be yeah. super fast. I love the flash. Yeah. Yeah. I do, too. One of my favorites of all time. Now, if you could travel anywhere in the world, Courtney said Italy. I'm. That's a great choice. Great Beautiful food. place. But Beautiful. I agree with you, and this is if I could pick a place anywhere in the world, it would be Scotland here as well. Wow. Oh, man. man. Well, couldn't my, imagine. My grandmother's Scottish, and my grandfather was Scottish. Yeah. And I've got a big percentage of Scot- Scottish in me, so I've always wanted to go see the, the layout of Motherland. Yeah. The motherland. <laughs> yes. Yes. So. You, wear the, you fit right in, man. I'm, and it's just a beautiful place. Oh, country yeah. it's i awesome. mean wow uh i do want to mention your tagline we were we were talking about a tagline <laughs> i love this i'm like i have to say this so i said courtney what's your tagline and she says we don't really have one but how about you pick it and we stick it <laughs> <laughs> love that one love it love it did y'all have fun today we had oh, a man, great this time is awesome. Yep. Aw- awesome now folks go to their facebook page and give them a like check out their website for more information to stay updated on all things tattoo <laughs> faithful tattoo studio.com and we're going to link all of that as i said earlier to the description of this episode so you can just scroll down look at the description and those links will be there for all of that now if somebody heard this and they said i'm going to get a tattoo tomorrow how would that? What would they do to get in touch with you? Um, they can text. They can call. They can Instagram. They can face, <laughs> email. <Yeah. laughs> like honestly, I'm pretty responsive, and that's what I try to be Johnny on the spot with the response. I will say, with him uh, currently only working on the weekends, we're yep. booked up about a month out right okay. now. But we will try to get you in just as soon as we can, and then once he goes full time, we'll have that extra availability. Yes. And I'm going to be a little uh, slave driver, and you know. If we can fit you in, you're going to get in. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. If you need one during the middle of the week, you let me know. Like I said, my clients are number one, and I will always try to appease them. 100%. And I do want to mention that one of the things that I asked in the questionnaire I sent you guys was, how did you kind of know it was time to go full-time, let's say? And and Travis made the comment, he just didn't feel right telling people you're going to have to wait X amount of time in order right. to get it because I'm when he saw that coming, when it was getting pushed out too far, you were basically like, Hey, yeah, yeah. either I got to, you know, I pretty much got to do this full time because I am so busy that I'm having to delay. It just didn't sit right. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And like I said, my clients are number one in my book. So Love I don't it, want to man. turn people Love away. No. Yeah, I believe that 100%. So yeah. I think y'all are great. We're going to send y'all all kinds of business around thank here. Uh, so thank you for coming on the show, thank both you. of you. Absolutely. We were honored. Oh, yes. It was all our honor. <laughs> uh, absolutely. I want to thank everyone out there for viewing and listening to Local Leaders of Podcast. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. I want to thank our sponsors, Trisha Johnston Realtor, BJ Pawn, Fit Blends, Denim Springs, Black Sheep Creative, SR Enterprise Painting, William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance, Adele Lane, Spa and Boutique, Fit Body Boot Camp. We could not do any of this without all of you. And if you'd like info on sponsoring the show or appearing on the show, please reach out to me at jim at localleadersthepodcast.com. And I do want to mention y'all are on trade, as am I. Yeah. So yes. I trade exchange, Moxie. Yes. If you if you uh if you choose to pay with any of that, both of us accept that. Yeah. So uh check that out. Until next time, I am Jim Chapman reminding you love your community, support local business, and keep leading. Thank you very much. Black Sheep Creative understands the importance of digital marketing and your return on your investment. It's their aim to provide professional web and graphic design services at a price point that smaller businesses and startups can afford. Get in touch with them on the web at blacksheepcreative.com.